Good morning, everybody. Y'all come on in and get you a seat. We're fixing to uh, we're fixing to get started here. Good to see you guys. Um, man, I tell you what, uh, y'all y'all know how exciting how excited I get anytime we have the opportunity to be able to gather up and uh, man in worship. Um, I want you to hang on to that because that may come back here in just a little while. I got a couple of things before we get kicked off uh, that I've got to uh, that I got to talk about here really really quick. Uh, man, number one, you know we're we're blessed to have so many of you come from so many different places. All right, and and you know anytime I, I go to mention in schools uh, or communities or towns, I always leave one off. Okay, and and every time I do that, I, you know, I, man, I I get in trouble when I do that. And you know, the last time I last time we were talking about some schools, I I, I left off Deleon, and that was not intended. I love Deleon. I love Deleon. Deleon is a very special place to me. All right, uh, so I'm not going to mention any other schools anymore because I, that's why I don't do a whole lot of birthdays because I always get in trouble because I forget one. But anyways, we've got a great day for you, and we're going to start this off very special, okay? All right, everybody everybody, good? Kelsey, I need you to come up here, girl. Yes, you are. You're going to come up here. You're going to come up here. All right, you're, you're, we're not going any further until you come up here. All right, so come up, come on up. Come on up. You know, Kelsey and I, man, we had a we had a little little wager this last week on a. No, come on, you right up here, girl. Right up here. Right up here. Right up here. I'm gonna move this actually right over there. Huh? No, yeah. Now turn around. Turn around, Ronnie. I need you to zoom in here, okay? <laughs> really zoom in. All right. You know, we had a little wager with that Dublin Comanche game. You know. You just got lucky. No, turn, Ke lucky. Kelsey. Face. See the camera. I need you to face that way. There you go. There you go. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and man, it's just a face that way, Kelsey. Come on. Um, you know, she finally got her a good shirt on. I love Comanche. I do. I do. Don't get me wrong. I love Comanche. But uh, thank you for being a good sport. But and thank you. Just you. Got lucky. That's ain't no luck about it, boy. When the guys get, they ain't no luck about it. You know, hey, they you know, they, they did. They just played better. You know, that, that's all that matters. Now, you, see, you know, don't you hate a sore loser? Don't you just hate a sore loot? You know, that's typical Comanche. They're going to make an excuse for everything, all right? So I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, all right. Anyways, thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. That was a close one, too, man. I know, uh, man, we got any, uh, we got any, uh, we got any uh, A&M people in here? We got, we got a few Aggies in here? We got a few Aggies in here? Y'all are pretty happy today, aren't you? Man, they're still mouthing back there, man. You know, Ronnie, we listened to that all Friday night sitting on that Comanche side, didn't we? I mean, it was golly bum, man. It just keeps going and keeps going. <laughs> Got them fired up now. Man, I can't wait till next year. Woo! <laughs> See, they're still talking back there. Come on now. Come on now, man. What a great, uh, guys, what a great time. What a great time. But, Kelsey, thank you, ma'am. I'll give you that shirt back if you want it, cause I ain't ever gonna wear it. Just gonna tell you. But anyways, hey, hey, man, we had some uh, had a great ranch rodeo last night, uh, and uh, everybody that participated in that, you guys that put that together, you guys that came out and supported that, thank you. Uh, Want to welcome you guys jumping in online with us. We got some big things happening this week, exciting things happening this week, and uh, uh, man, we're all gonna be blessed to be a part of it. Okay, y'all ready to worship this morning? Man, I tell you what, I am too. I am too. I am too. Let me pray, and uh, then I'm gonna get out of the way and uh, let these guys do their thing here. Y'all pray with me, Father. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to gather up and, and worship, uh, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to have a little fun, uh, Father. Laughter, uh, man, laughter is is so so good for us, uh, Lord. Smiling, uh, putting a smile on our face. Uh, Father, there's, there's something about that that is just absolutely relaxing, uh, God, and refreshing. Father, we thank you for that. Lord, as we enter into this time of, of coming together here, whether we're, whether we're in this building, uh, whether, we're, whether we're at home, uh, whether we're in this state, whether we're in another state, uh, Father, we, just, we, we thank you for the ability to come together in the way that you allow us to. Uh, Jesus, I pray that, uh, Lord, this, this is our theme today. I pray that our worship is pleasing to you. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your name. Amen.
See, they did another long pause, and I almost got up. And Ron Jones back there, he's like, Remy Tech, Remy Tech, go. I'm like, no, four songs, four songs. <laughs> See, you guys are always messing with me. All right, good morning, everybody. Just some uh, announcements that we got this week. Just a little reminder, you know, uh, our usual weekly activities with the Women Bible Study Mondays at uh, 6.30 p.m., and then... Uh, we have the adult Bible study, Cal Kids, and Youth Group that meet on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m., and meals are always provided for the Cal Kids and the youth. Uh, this Wednesday, for the youth, uh, youth group will be traveling to Stephenville this Wednesday for Fields of Faith. Uh, we will be leaving at 6.30, okay? So we will be leaving the church at 6.30. Uh, we will have a, a little sack like a little sack lunch to go uh to eat on the way over there that way they have some food some type of snack because you know they're always hungry but uh we will be taking the bus over there at 6 30 and uh when when's it usually get over like last year's was like nine o'clock yeah about nine o'clock so I told the kids this week that uh, we would just kind of stay in touch with the parents of the kids. And if you are if you do live right there in Stephenville and you want to pick them up, we'll get a hold of you and we can work that out. And uh, But if not, we'll just be bringing them back here at the church with the church bus at 9 o'clock that night. Well, ar- around 9 o'clock. I'll keep the parents posted on that. And then our... Uh, we have our next fifth quarter coming up this Friday. Uh, the flyers are at the offering tables, and there's some down the hallway. But uh, we're doing a fifth quarter after the Jacksboro game this Friday from 10.30 p.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to do a little campfire games and uh, do uh, some door prizes with that. And then with that, we also have our – next family play day coming up this saturday on october 16th and then i think that's everything yeah that's everything okay troy you can come up here now troy okay all right we had our rehab auction saturday huge success raised nineteen thousand dollars in a little money all right Several of you church members were there. Rose got a pound cake. She come in this morning and said it was the best that you've ever tasted. I said, why didn't you just bring me a piece? She said, well, David ate it all. So (laughs) anyway, this picture was at the rehab auction, and everybody that looked at it said it needs to come to a cowboy church. And we're going to put it up here on display, and you come look at it, and you make your own decision. Anyway, we thank every one of you that helped us with the auction, everything you did, uh, you, whether you wasn't there physically, but I know you was there, you know, and it was a busy Saturday. But anyway, thank y'all. There you go. All right, with that, uh, I would just like to pray for us, and then we will dismiss the children to Kids Church, and we'll get back to worship. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just I just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to come to a place like this, Lord, and to worship you and to have this community that we have here today at this church, Lord, and allow us to have the laughter. And, Lord, I just, I just pray that you allow us to have open minds and open hearts for the message that you have for us to receive from Jimmy today, Lord. Lord, and I just pray that they're your words coming through him and not Jimmy's opinion. And I just pray that uh, you allow us to see the blessings that you have for us this week, Lord. And it's in your son's name. Amen.
Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for the day and giving us all the time to be here and worship along with Jimmy. I just want to thank you for the weather. I'm a big fan of it. I love the rain. And I just want to thank you for everything you've ever done for us. Amen. Amen. Give me my prayer. Give me my cue, you know. Everybody breathe. Everybody take a breath. All right. Can you breathe? Everybody good? Oh, my goodness, man. Felt like the life was sucked out of here for a minute. All right. Come on now. Hey, uh, man, Emily, I got I to gotta tell you, thank you for the songs that, uh, that y'all picked out this morning uh, because they fit. Uh, they fit with where we're going to go uh, for the next several weeks, okay? Uh, we're going to be starting a new series uh, today. We're going to start it today. And, uh, guys, the title of this, the title of this, you know, I'll give you one guess, but the title of this is Worship. Okay, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at we're gonna be focusing on uh, man what worship is uh, you know wh- what uh, what it looks like and 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 to to, to kind of give you uh, man to kind of give you just a little bit of a background of of where God has taken me with this uh, you know and, and this this has been a process for me this has been a journey for me um, over the last several months uh, to get me to the point here where. You know, I understand, I understood, and I realized that, okay, all right, God, I see what you're, I see what you're doing here. I see what you're, I see what you're trying to get me to focus on, uh, because there's been, there's, there's been all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's been all sorts of, uh, uh, can anybody say distractions? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's been all sorts of distractions that a lot of times takes, takes our focus off of where it needs to be. All right, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty easy statement to make, right? Everybody agree with that? All right, so, so I'm, I, man, as long as we're tracking here. But now here's the thing, here's the thing, and I want all of us to understand, uh, and, and, and as we go through this, uh, you're going you're, you're gonna to begin to learn where Jimmy is coming from with this as far as what God has showed me, all right? But, but the reality is, and, and folks get this, uh, because this is not a dig at anybody, uh, but we have, uh, we have a very limited view of what worship truly is okay and 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 the reason for that guys and, I, and i'm I, you know hey I, I've, I've been a part of church life for man for a, a long time now and and the reason for that is because you know within our churches we we haven't done a very good job of teaching about this okay of talking about this of sharing what worship truly is and 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 because of that uh, we have people that, that that don't know what it means, all right? Uh, people that don't know, well, man, hey, I don't know how to worship or, or, or whatever that may be, all right? How do we do it? And, and so, guys, what we're going to do here, what we're going to do here as we go through this, we're going to start with a very, very, very basic concept, okay? I like basic, okay? I don't know about y'all, but I like basic, okay? Basic makes a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and, and, and when we don't complicate it and, and that sort of stuff. And I'm going to use, and they're not going to like this, but they're going to get over it, okay? But I'm going to use the band as an example today. I'm going to use them as an example, you know, this morning, that noise that they make, if you would, as, as Jesse put it so eloquently last week. But, but here's, here's the thing with that. I'm not digging at you there, Mason, not digging at you. But, but here's the thing with this. Here's the thing with this. Uh, you know, and I was in Lubbock yesterday at the Cowboy Church out there. We were doing a school. Um, and I shared this. This is this is part of the same thing that I shared with them out there after their band got done playing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. And I think we all agree with this, and I think we all get this. All right. They don't get up here on Sunday morning with the intention. Now, folks, understand this to entertain you. All right. That that's not their purpose. That's not their focus. That's not what they're trying to do, all right? Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a concert, all right? Make sense? Everybody, you with me there? All right, it, it's, it's not a concert for you, all right? That's not their end goal. That's not what they're trying to do, you know? And, and guys, you know, man, I'm going to tell you something. And, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I, if, and, uh, here's a confession. I get jealous, all right? Anybody in here get jealous? Anybody at home get jealous? I get jealous when, you know, when I hear somebody play an instrument uh, or when I hear them sing with a beautiful voice, I get jealous, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and I know, D- Danny, I, you probably just like me. You get on that tractor, you get in that shower, uh, man, you can sing, can't you? Come on now, be honest, be honest. Man, I, when I was a kid growing up, you know, out there on that, eating that dust on that tractor, I'm going to tell you, man, I could sing. Conway Twitty had nothing on me, all right? I could sing, I, and it was good. All right, I mean, I got a standing ovation after every single song, okay? 
I, that's just, uh, that, that's, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking to it, all right? But the reality of it is, the reality of it is, you know, when I sing, if I was to sing in public, man, I, I, don't, I don't have a gift there. don't have a gift there. Now, I hope some of you realize and I hope some of you see and you remember and you understand where the correlation of where we were at last week of how all of this is going to begin to tie in, okay? I don't have a, you know, we talked about making a noise last week, all right? You remember that? If I strum that guitar, I, I could get on them drums, all right? I could play them. I, I mean, I could beat on them. I could bang on them. I'd probably knock a hole in every head. It's not going to come out, you know, when you hit that boom, boom, boom. Today. That was awesome, man. I was about to stand up. I liked it. If I did that, it, it, then something going to happen, okay? Because it's not going to have that same effect. I don't have that gift. I get jealous of people who can play an instrument like that, who can sing, who are gifted with that, because, man, I wish I was. But that's not the gift that God has given me, all right? So here's the other side of this. We've already established, we've already said, they're not up here to entertain you. They're not up here to perform for you, okay? Uh, the, the other side of that is, guys, and now here's the thing, here's the thing, because here's where we have jacked this up in churches uh, for so, so, so many years, okay? Uh, when they get up here, when they sing, the songs that they sing, now understand this, it doesn't matter if you like the song or not, okay? I cannot tell you how many times, how many times, uh, that, that, you know, that, that we've been in the ministry uh, serving in churches that will be in a place, Joy, you've heard this, you know it, you know it, you always get that, well, man, hey, the band's too loud. Well, turn your hearing aid down or back up or whatever it may be, okay? Because it may be too soft for somebody else. It's that same concept. It's too hot. It's too cold, all right? But, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, I, man, we've been in churches where all you had was a piano and an organ. We've been in churches where, man, you know, some, some staunch old Baptist churches where, you know, heaven forbid, somebody brings out a guitar, okay? Uh, and that, 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 that old deacon, that crusty old deacon says, I can't believe they're bringing the devil's instrument out here to play. Now, let me, let, let me, let, let me explain something to you here. I've read the Bible a lot. You know, I, I mean, I have. You know, I've, 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 I'm trying to become a student, if you would, of the Old Testament. And the more I study the Old Testament and the more I study uh, different things that they did when they praised God, you know what I see a lot of in there? I see a whole bunch of stringed instruments, okay? Is that, is that guitar a stringed instrument? Okay, I see a whole lot of stringed instruments. You know, I see like cymbals, okay? Now, I can imagine, all right, I can imagine that they had something to beat on too, okay, that worked kind of like a drum, all right? Uh, but you know the one thing I've never seen in there that I've never seen that was th that they had in the Old Testament? I've never seen a piano in there. I've never seen a mention of piano. I've, seen, I've, I've read about a lot of harps, okay? Read about a lot of harps, but I've never read about a piano and, a, and an organ, okay? And, and so where some of this has come from, I have no idea. I absolutely have no idea. But guys, what we need to understand, whatever form, whatever our worship looks like, Guys, it's not for us. It's not about us. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter whether we like the style of a song. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we like the beat of a song. Now, I, man, I'm, I'm a music lover, and I've shared this with you guys before. I love all types of music. I really do. Uh, if, you, if you went and looked in my truck at the stations that are all preset in my truck, you know, you, you would be blown away at all the different types of music. I listen to a lot of different music. You know, I, some people, the purists, they don't like the Nashville country. I love the Nashville country, all right? I like Florida Georgia Line. Man, I like them, all right? I like some Flow Rider, all right? You know, I, I mean, I like listening to those guys. You know, I, man, I'll even, I'll even listen to Puff Daddy and some of those guys, all right? You know, I, I, I like the old country. Give me some George Strait. Give me some Conway. But you know what? You want to play some Jason Aldean and all? Man, I'm down for it, okay? I like it. I like music. I like music. Music puts me in a good mood. You know, uh, man, guys, I can take a song that they've got a bad meaning to, and you know what? You know, God can show me something in there. You know, man, hey, there, there is a message in that song, okay? Uh, so, so, guys, you know, I, I, I say this because so many times we allow our likes or our dislikes we allow our preferences, okay, to go against our non-preferences, if you would, and we allow that stuff to affect our worship. All right, you understand what I'm saying there? 
All right, uh, we, we, we start making it about what I like and what I dislike, okay? Now, I'm not telling you that all, every single song out there is good. Understand that. I'm not what I'm telling you, all right? We got we gotta, we gotta to be proactive there. But guys, what I, what I am saying is, Whatever, whatever it is, whatever style of worship that we have, and this is one element, folks. I want you to understand this. This is one, one of many, many different elements that we're going to cover with this, all right? You know, it, 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 we can't allow it to be about us. We can't allow it to be about me. You see, because, guys, the very, a very unique aspect of worship, worship, is, and you sang about it this morning. I don't know if you caught it or if you missed it or whatever, but worship is pleasing to God. You understand what we're saying there? Worship is pleasing to him. Now, here's the other thing. You know what we get out of worship? You know what we get out of worship? When we worship God, when we worship Jesus Christ, when we worship our Lord and Savior, you know what that does? That brings us joy. All right, everybody say joy. joy. You guys at home, man, if you're watching at home, type joy in the comments there for us. It brings us joy. It brings us joy. Now, you know, now, 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 check this out. Check this out because here's the reality of it. When life begins to happen, all right, when life begins to happen, and, and guys, what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, you know, if you've got that, that old commercial bull that you're just hanging on to, you know, he's not worth nothing or anything. He's just your old favorite bull or whatever he is, and he gets on your neighbor, okay? You get that phone call from your neighbor, and your old commercial bull is out there, and, and he's out there. He's out there, and, and your neighbor's got these registered high-dollar heifers that he's going to AI, okay? And he's getting them ready to AI, and, and your old commercial bull gets out there, and, and, and he's taking care of business, all right? You know, life happens, and that's not going to be a very good day for you, is it? All right? You know, because that neighbor's not going to be very happy with you. He's not going to like that your old commercial bull is out there messing up with his, entire, with his entire operation. The other side of it, you get up to go to work. You're on your way to work one morning, Monday morning. Yes, yeah, start, let's start the week off, Monday morning, and it's raining. Man, it's coming down. It, it's raining. You're praising God for the rain, and you're driving along there. You're driving slow, and then all of a sudden you hear that, bam, you have a blowout. All right, and you're already late as it is. And so now you've got that blowout, and you've got to pull over, all right? You know, ladies, you got your, man, you, you got, you gone out, got you a new outfit for work. You got your hair all did, makeup's perfect and all of that. You know, guys, it, it, it don't matter to us, but, you know, you, you get out there, and now you're like, now I'm going to get all soaking wet because i got to change this flat tire. Life happens, doesn't it? All right? Life happens. And the reality of those situations, guys, those situations begin to, begin to start to steal some joy from us. Okay, but here's the thing with this. Now, and, 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 and I need to be, I need to be, I need to be equally fair here, because there is a good number of you in here. There's a good number of you watching that you, you have embraced James one two. All right, I know you have. You've embraced James one two that says, "Consider it all joy when troubles of any kind arise." And 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 you 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 individuals, you guys that have embraced that, and when you have that blowout, when you have that hard time, and you man, you're like, woohoo, praise God. You know, and, 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 and you're living that. I'm in awe of you at times. Because when I have that blowout, you know, I'm not, I, there's not a whole lot of praise that's coming out of my mouth. Understand? All right, so guys, with that, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, life's circumstances. Now, I want you to hear this. Our life's circumstances. Our life's circumstances should never define our ability or our willingness to, to worship. Did everybody hear that? Our life circumstances should never define our ability or our willingness to worship. Now hang on to that right there. We're going to look at a passage in Luke today is where we're going to camp out. We're going to be in Luke 19 if you want to, if you got your Bibles and you want to go ahead and open up there. But I need to set the background up for this before we read it. Okay? In Luke 19, uh, guys, we've read this many, many times. Uh, we've really focused on this particular passage, you know, specifically around Easter time. Now, here's the thing with this. Here's the thing. You know, you talk, we talk about Palm Sunday, and that's where some of you are going to remember this from. But in Luke 19, what, what is taking place, what we're fixing to read here, there's, there's, this, there's this event that's taking place. Jesus is preparing to make that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. All right? Everybody, you, you kind of know where I'm at. Everybody knows where we're going to be there? Now, there's this unique thing that Luke records. 
this encounter that he records. You know, Jesus, you know, they, they all talk, Jesus sends a couple of his, his disciples on ahead, and he sends them, sends them ahead to go and find that young colt, that young donkey, and bring it back to him. All right, there's that exchange that takes place there. And so they go and they get that young donkey and they bring it back to him and he gets on him and he begins to make this ride, uh, make this ride and make this entrance into Jerusalem, okay? Now in Luke's account, that's where we're going to pick, pick it up. Down in Luke, uh, Luke 19, beginning in verse 36, check this out, it says this. If you don't have your Bibles, it's going to be up here on the screens for you coming across your phones at home. It says, as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road, of, on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his father, followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. And now listen to what they're saying here. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying these things now listen to what jesus says right here he replied if they kept quiet uh, the stones along the road would burst into cheers y'all pray with me father we thank you once again for the opportunity and for the ability to man to come together today father i thank you for this time lord this time that uh, we have set aside that we can corporately father as a family come together and have a time of worship now father I, man I'm, I, I pray very very selfishly here lord jesus that i can hide behind your cross father that the words that are spoken here that it's not my thoughts it's not my ideas it's not my words but father it is the message that you would have for each and every one of us father we need to get this right uh lord as as one of your children as one of your followers this is an aspect of our walk with you. This is an aspect of our journey with you, Lord, that we need to be working on every single day. And, Father, we need to make sure that we are getting this right. So, Father, I just, man, I pray this morning, Lord, if, they, if there's someone in here that, you know, God, maybe they've got something going on in their life. Maybe they've got something that's taking place. Maybe they've got some sin there that, that Lord, that is preventing them from worshiping you in a way that they need to be. Father, I'm just going to, man, I'm going to pray that you make that evident to them. And, Lord, I'm going to pray they confess that to you. Father, maybe there's someone here, maybe there's someone watching, maybe there's someone that's listening that, uh, God, they don't, uh, they don't know you. They don't have that personal relationship with you. Uh, Lord, maybe, they, maybe they've been told different things. Maybe they, uh, Father, maybe they've, maybe they've been hurt in a church before. Maybe they've been judged. And, and, and Father, maybe they, uh, maybe they think they, they're, they're judging themselves and they think that, man, there's no way you could ever love them. Well, Father, I'm just, I'm, man, I'm going to pray very intentionally and very specific here. God, that when, by the time we get to the end of this, Lord, I just, man, I, I pray for a word from your Holy Spirit to just speak life into their heart. And, Lord, for them to know that your grace and that your mercy and that your forgiveness is sufficient. Father, we, we, we thank you for this time. Jesus, we pray for your protection on this gathering here today. Father, we pray for your direction here as well. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Guys, as we, uh, you know, as, as, as we look at this, and, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing as we elaborate on this, you know, and, and I want to ask you a question, all right, I want to ask you a question, has anybody, has anybody ever heard a rock talk, anybody ever seen a rock talk, a stone talk, you know, has anybody ever seen a, a stone begin to cry out and praise God? You know, the reality of that is, there, you know, if, if you did, I don't know what you were doing to do that. But the reality of it is, none of us have really, none of us have, have, have ever seen that. You know, if, 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 I, if I looked down and the concrete started talking or the chair started shaking and started moving and started talking, you know, I'm going to be one that's going to freak out, guys. But, but here's the thing. And, and I want you to understand, because when we study this passage, there's some Old Testament that it goes back to. And I'm not taking this out of context, all right? I want you to understand that. You know, we know that there's that, 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 that Luke is alluding, if you would, to, to Habakkuk 2.11 there. And you can, you can write that down, and you can go read, that, read all that for yourself. But, but guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a, literal, I, I, I'm a literal guy, and I believe what Jesus said here was very very literal okay i believe that what he said when he turned to those pharisees when they, those pharisees began to tell him that man hey you need to shut those people up you need to shut those followers up all these people that are coming out you don't need to let them say that 
You don't need to be letting them call you a king. You don't need to be letting them shouting hallelujahs to you and all of that. And I believe when Jesus told them, guys, that if, 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 if the followers didn't do it, that the stones along the road would burst into cheers, guys, I'm going to tell you, I take that as a literal statement, and I believe that that is exactly what would have began to take place. Now, we can agree, you know, we can agree or we can disagree, but here's the thing that this tells me that what, what here's the thing that I get out of this Jesus deserves our worship all right can we agree on that Jesus deserves our worship all right well guys here's the other side of it as well Jesus demands our worship okay you understand what I'm saying there he demands our worship folks if we don't worship him if we don't worship him in the way that we are called and in the way that we that, that we must worship him, then folks, we've got to understand that the very chairs you sit in, the very the very roads we drive on, the rocks out there in that parking lot, that those rocks, that these chairs will cry out to him and they will worship him if we don't do it. You know, and, and, and guys, you know, with that, here's the thing. If you don't know what worship is, then guys, I'm going to ask you, please stay with me here. Please stay hooked with this because we've established worship brings us joy. Worship does make us feel good. You know, but guys, we also know that that worship is not for us, all right? I get the importance of music within worship. Man, I do. I get it. But guys, here's the thing about it. It should never matter when we come together corporately to worship, to have that time of worship. It should not matter whether we're singing a cappella, okay? Whether there's no instruments, whether there's pianos, whether there's guitars, whether there's drums, whether there's tambourines, whether there's cymbals, whether there's sticks, whatever it may be, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter if we have that. All right, guys, it shouldn't matter if we like the song, if we dislike the song, because the thing about it is, the thing about it is that worship is never going to be directed at us. You understand what I'm saying there? When we turn that around and make that worship about us, then, guys, we are messing this whole thing up. Check this out in Psalm 95. Psalm 95 says, Come, says, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. You know, so now my question to you now is, how many of you shouted joyfully this morning? Anybody shout joyfully this morning? Man, there you go. I like it. All right, you see, guys, we need to be, man, we need to be willing to shout joyfully to the Lord no matter what we're facing, no matter what's going on. You know, but now, 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 now with that, I want you to hear this because it's also important that we hear this. Not what Jimmy is saying here, okay? Not what Jimmy is saying, but I want you to hear also what the Word says. Check this out. Now, before we do that, before we do that, because we've said it, we've used the analogy so many times, all right? You go to a rodeo, you know, last night at the ranch rodeo, when them teams rode out there, what was their family doing? What was their family doing, Josh? Did they have fans over there? What were they doing? They were hollering and cheering, weren't they? They were hollering and cheering. All right, you know, I asked you about them Aggies earlier. Were the Aggies cheering last night? Yeah, yeah they were. Yeah. Some of you don't even know. See, Cheryl's not here this morning. She sent me a text, said they overslept. All right. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. going to be watching online, so she's going to get me for this. But I know she just couldn't face me this morning since a and beat Alabama last night, all right? I get it. You know, I get it. That's okay. You know what those people were doing at those games? Man, they were cheering. You go to the NFR, your favorite cowboy or cowgirl gets out there to compete, what do you do? Well, you stand up and you go to cheer them, don't you? You know, so guys, and, and, and here's, you know, here's the thing with it. Here's the thing with it. It's so easy, it's so easy for us to go to something like that and stand up and cheer, all right, and stand up and shout. But boy, when we come into church, all right, when we come into church, what do we do? If I had a chair up here, I'd demonstrate. We sit on our hands, you know, like this, and, and, and a whole bunch of us are frowning. Like, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I, yeah, you can't say amen there. You got to say ouch, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. We need to be as excited about Jesus, okay, we need to be as excited about what Jesus has done for us as we are when our favorite cowboy scores a perfect ride, when our favorite team wins, when they score a touchdown, make a basket, hit a home run, whatever it may be. We need to be as excited about the opportunity to serve Jesus. We need to be as excited about what he has done for us. And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, man, that is contagious. Growing up, I was an OU fan. 
I'm still an OU fan. I've, I've gradually gotten back over there, man. Boomer Sooner. They did good yesterday. Joel's leaving. Here's the thing. But here's the, this is a true story. This is a true story. It's a true story. True story. My, my second year at Tarleton, my second year in college, I got an opportunity to go to the Texas OU game. All right. And, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a sea of a whole bunch of tea sippers, okay? And, and you know, and I'm the only one there. And, and I'm, I'm, I, had, I think I had purple on because I didn't want to get killed because I knew where I was going to be sitting. And I'm watching this game, and it was a good game, all right? I mean, o OU was dominating the entire game, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, but I'm being quiet. I'm not going to get hurt. And then something began to happen in about the third quarter. Texas began to come back. Texas was the underdog. But, and, and here's this honest to goodness story. Man, I was, a, I, I was a fair weather fan because at the end of that game, I was cheering for Texas, man. They come back and won. It, it, was, it was a crazy deal, all right? So, so guys, with that, the point, the point with that is, the point with that is, Jesus has done something amazing for you, okay? All right? And, and your worship, your excitement, hear me when I say this, your excitement, you know what? That is contagious for somebody over here. That is contagious. That is contagious for somebody that, 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 for somebody that, that is watching you, that is keeping their eyes on you. And you know what? You know, other people are going to feed off of that, all right? Jesus deserves our worship. He demands our worship, no matter what the circumstances are. Now, here's what happens. Here's what happens. Acts 2, 46 through 47. You can write it down if you can't turn there, but they'll be up here on the screens for you. Check this out. This is what happens. This is what happens when our worship is pleasing to God. They worship together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God, and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Now check this out right here. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Guys, worship is contagious. Man, it is contagious. When we, you know, we ch I challenged you, we, we, we were challenged last week. You know, we, we ended up talking about faith, hope, and love, with love being the greatest of, of all the gifts. You know, I challenged you to go and tell someone, you know, when you go to the big store, whatever it may be, you see that person, man, smile at them and say, man, hey, I love you. You don't got to have a conversation with them. Just tell them you love them and keep on walking. I hope some of you did that. I know a few of you did. You said you got some funny looks. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. But, guys, here's the other side of this. When we tell somebody we love them, when we conduct ourselves in a Christ-like manner, <coughs> excuse me, in a Christ-like way, people are going to be drawn to that. I don't want to hang out with somebody that's in a bad mood all the time. All right? You know what I'm saying? How many of you enjoy that? All right? You, you got somebody in your life that's, that's just, man, they're just in a foul mood all the time. Life just sucks for them, whatever it may be. Are you drawn to people like that? I avoid, if you come at me and you, you're frowning and, and for no good reason, I'm going to avoid you. I'm just going to tell you right now. I don't want to be around you because you're going to mess up my juju, all right? We're, 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 we're in a good place, all right? Don't be bringing that negative stuff to me. Don't be bringing it into my world. I don't want no part of it, okay? You know, worship brings us joy. Worship and, and, and serving God, man, the way, the way he's called us to serve him, man, it brings us joy. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, church. Hear it. When we live our lives that way, when we live our lives filled with joy, when we live our lives filled with worship, and when we do that together, not out there on an island by yourself, but when we do that together, you know what God does? God blesses that. We see what took place in the early church. You know, as they're, they're, they're doing life together. They're gathering up together. They're growing together, man. They're producing together. You know, they're worshiping each day in the temple. You know, man, it, it, we beg you to come once a week, all right? You know, and some of you, man, it, it, we're, we're begging you to come twice a week, all right? You know, guys, we should have this want to to be able to say, you know what? I didn't get enough Sunday. I want some more, all right? You, we got Thanksgiving coming up, all right? You're going to fill your plate up. You know, and you're going to get full, but you know what? You're going to look over there, and there's going to be all them wonderful desserts, and you're going to be like, mm, man, I didn't get enough. I'm finna go get me some of that, ain't I? All right, folks, I'm going to tell you something. That's the way we need to be living our lives. That's the way we need to be doing church together. That's the way we need to be, need to be doing all this, all, all this together. You see, when, when, when we conduct ourselves in a Christ-like manner, people are drawn to that. As the early church, as they worshiped God daily, not just for 30 minutes on Sunday, all right, as they worshiped God daily, every single day, as they lived their lives together, what happened? 
God began to add to their number every single day those who were being saved. Those who were being saved. Folks, when we love on others, they're going to be drawn to what you have. When we worship, you know, when we worship is fun, man. When we, when we worship him, people are going to be drawn to that. And I need to go back to our original text where we started. And I, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up because I want to remind you of this. I want, I, want, I want to close with this right here. And I love, I love the way the New American Standard Version, the way it translates Luke 19.40. And that's, Gene, that's where I'm going back to is Luke 19.40. Uh, and I want to remind you because I want you to hear this. But Jesus answered, and I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. Here's the thing. Here's the thing as I wrap this up today as we talk about worship. You see, that day for Jesus, that day, the day that he was making that entrance into Jerusalem, the time that he was going to spend there in Jerusalem, the things that he was going to go through, the things that he was going to uh, have to endure, it was inevitable, okay? Everybody understand that? It could not be avoided. All right, and guys, for us, it could not be avoided. For, in order for you to have salvation, in order for me to have salvation, that time could not be, uh, it couldn't, it, it, it wasn't. The Pharisees, no matter how bad they wanted to stop that praising, no matter how bad they wanted to change the focus there, guys, they could not stop it. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You can't stop it. I can't stop it. Jesus, Jesus is the only one, is the only one that we should be focused on and, guys, that we should be concerned about. Because you see what Jesus told them there that that day. If these people do not worship me, if these people become quiet, church, what he's telling us today, if we become quiet today, If we don't worship him, if we don't give him the worship that he deserves, then the very stones that we stand on will cry out. What does that tell me and what what, what do I hope it tells you? Guys, what I hope it tells you is, guys, that if we don't give our all to truly worship Jesus, if we don't give our all to worship him, then everything, everything around us will. But here's the thing. Don't limit your worship to 30 minutes we've talked about one aspect of worship today one aspect and guys that's the aspect of using music with it and singing with it we're going to cover a whole lot more basis with this over the next several weeks but if you're only allowing yourselves 30 minutes a week on sunday morning to worship then guys you're missing out on one of the greatest blessings that you will have in your life does music make it easy for us to worship yeah it does Yes, it does, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. But don't limit your worship simply to music. How do we worship him? Do we worship him through song? Yes, we do. Do we worship him by spending time with him? Yes, we do. Do we worship him by by considering it all joy no matter what life throws at us? Yes, we do. Do we worship him by, you know, when we get sick and and, and worship him knowing that God's going to take care of us there? Yes, we do. Do we worship him when we're thankful for the job that we have? Yes, we do. Do we worship him, guys, when we're able to to get from point A to point B safely without having to walk or whatever it may be? Then you know what? Yes, we do. Jesus deserves our worship, but Jesus also demands your worship. So my question for you is, how are you going to worship Jesus this week? I'm not asking you to show me. I'm not asking you to show the person sitting beside you. But what I am asking you is, are you willing to show him? Are you willing to show him the worship that he deserves? Man alive. You guys, y'all come on back up here. They're going to close us in one more song. They're going to finish us out there. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, no matter what life throws at you this week, no matter what comes at you, maybe your team loses. All right? Maybe your team loses. Maybe you're, you're embarrassed to wear another shirt. I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe you win. You can be a gracious winner, and you can praise God for it. You can be a gracious loser and praise God for that as well. All right, amen? Let, guys, let's worship Jesus this week. All right? Love on somebody. Tell them you love them. I don't care how they look at you. I don't care if they look at you like you're stupid, like you're crazy, like you're a moron. 
you love on them, you tell them you love them, and man, praise God for giving you the opportunity to do that. Worship him this week. Don't sit on your hands. I'm not telling you you got to throw your hands in the air. Maybe you need to get up and jump around. Maybe you need to dance. You know, that's another aspect of worship that we're going to talk about. But folks, be intentional. Be intentional about worshiping Jesus. Because if you're only limiting it to the 30 minutes that you had here, come tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, I'm going to tell you right now, your tank's already going to be empty. Keep it full. Keep it full. Amen? Amen. All right, y'all stand with me. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer here. Father, we thank you once again for this day. Lord, I thank you for, uh, God, for that sweet, sweet time, Lord, that we had together this morning, Lord, to corporately, to as a family, worship you. Uh, Father, I thank you, man. I thank you for the talent that surrounds me up here. Lord, that, that you've blessed us with people that have that ability to lead us through that time. God, I just, man, I pray your blessings upon them. And Father, I know, man, I, I know there are still lots and lots of questions with this. Uh, Father, because I know there's somebody that they're out there, they're, they've, they've got a question going through their mind right now. Well, how in the world am I going to worship Jesus tomorrow at work when I've got to be thinking about work? Father, don't let them get discouraged there. Don't let them get discouraged there. Because, Lord, you're going to show us the answer to all of that. Now, Father, very specifically and very heartfelt here, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for that individual. Lord, maybe they don't know you. Maybe, maybe they have allowed the world to steal their joy. And Lord, maybe they think that they're not worthy of your grace, of your forgiveness. So, Father, I'm going to pray that you block all that negative stuff out of their mind, out of their ears, to where all they can hear is you. And, Lord, that they would know that you're calling them to something, something bigger and something better. Now, folks, if that's you, if you don't know Jesus, this part of this prayer right here, this is for you. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died on that cross for my sin. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I ask you to save me. Father, if they prayed that prayer right there, Lord, give them the courage they need to find somebody. Just find someone and tell them that, man, they've invited you in. Lord, give them the courage to follow through with believer's baptism or to make that public profession of faith. Father, we love you. We praise you. We ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Guys, God bless you. Y'all have a great, great week. Uh, one other thing, one other final thing before everybody just blasts off and takes off. Uh, do, guys, do remember, us, uh, do re we, got, we got some exciting things taking place this week. For those of you that do know, those of you maybe forgot, uh, Ron and I are going to be flying out Wednesday morning to California to go meet with a group of people out there about a, the possibility of a satellite campus in uh, California. You were, we've been getting some amazing response uh, from out there and looking forward to seeing what God is going to do. So you guys be praying for us that uh, we get out there okay, but more importantly, that we get back home okay. All right? All right. Guys, love y'all. God bless you.